Hi friends, welcome to Faith at Home. This is Carla. As you can see, I'm not at home. I'm at church with my altar that we use in class sometimes. And today I put on a blue cloth because it is Advent. And I also have the cross to remind me that Jesus came to save us. And I'm gonna put my offering right here in a different basket. It's not even a basket. It looks like a piggy. <laughs> And I'm going to put that in here because my family and our classes have been collecting for something called Good Gifts, where we can pick out animals to send to other parts of the world where it would help people. It could be goats or chickens or pigs, cows, fish, bees, fruit trees, might not even be animals, some other ways to feed people. So that's fun. And then I have an Advent wreath. This is week two of Advent. Let's use Miss Leah's song from last week to help us remember where we're at. Come and see, come and see, light that candle of hope with me. Come and be, come and be, be the light of hope. Week one, candle is called hope. But we are now at week two. Come and see, come and see, light the candle of peace with me. Come and be, come and be, be a light of peace. Today we're going to talk about peace. That is another one of the gifts that God gives us. Hope and peace. And probably someone brought this to your house the other day in an Advent delivery. And it's a packet here, and it's got this wonderful, peaceful sleeping baby on it. And last week, we said, body, have hope. Because God came to earth as baby Jesus and grew up into grown-up Jesus in a human body. God knows exactly how we feel, what our feelings are like, what our body can do, what our body can't do. God knows all about it. So we can have hope that God understands us and listens to us. Today we want to talk about peace. And this says, rain. Practice peace. Hmm. Sometimes things aren't peaceful. They're angry or they're shocking or they're surprising. And when those things happen to us, our brain is designed to protect us. But sometimes it reacts without actually understanding what's going on. Sometimes our body gets tight or hot or we start breathing too fast and it feels like we can't think at all and we can't figure out what's going on. But in that moment where we freeze or remember to take a breath, that gives our, chance, our brain a chance to catch up and look around and say, oh, that surprised me, but I'm still safe. And after we realize we're safe, then we can think and then we can calm down and that feels more peaceful. But we all know our bodies need rest every day. That's why we're designed to sleep, right? We need calm and quiet and peace part of every day. Now, surprises could be fun. You ever been to a surprise party? It might scare the person a little bit if everybody jumps out and yells surprise, but it's a good surprise and it's safe. Or surprises might not be good. If you all of a sudden fall down and hit your head on the ice or something, that's a bad surprise and that hurts for a little bit. But then we lay there for a moment and usually we can get back up and go on just fine. So there's all kinds of surprises. Do you think Mary and Joseph got a surprise when an angel showed up? <laughs> I would be surprised and shocked and possibly scared or 
thinking I was going a little crazy because that doesn't happen. But it did happen to Mary and Joseph. An angel really did speak to them. Let's read just a little bit in this book called The King is Born. Right at the beginning, it says, there was once a girl called Mary. Mary was a happy girl. She was going to marry Joseph the carpenter who lived in the same village. All her friends would come to her wedding feast and Mary had many friends for she was a kind, helpful girl and everyone loved her. And then it happened. She was quite alone one day when suddenly she found that she was no longer by herself. The room seemed full of light and a beautiful angel was in front of her. At first, Mary was frightened, but the angel spoke. Don't be afraid, Mary. God is pleased with you. You are going to have a baby boy and you must name him Jesus. He will be a great king and one day he will rule over the whole world. How can I have a baby, asked Mary. I'm not even married yet. Well, this baby won't have an earthly father, said the angel. He'll be a special baby and God will be his father. Mary wondered if anyone would believe this but she did not argue. The angel spoke so gently that she felt quite safe. I'm ready for whatever God wants, she said. Then Mary was left alone to think about the wonderful thing that was going to happen to her. God's very special baby was going to be born and she was to be his mother. I must tell Joseph, thought Mary. But Joseph just couldn't believe her at first. It seemed so strange. Huh, he worked away in his carpenter's shop, sawing and hammering until the sky turned golden and it was too dark to work anymore. He lay down and fell asleep, still wondering. And then it happened again. The soft light and the voice of the angel with another message from God. Don't worry, Joseph, said the angel. Mary is quite right. She really is going to have a baby boy, but he won't have an earthly father because God will be his father. And you must give him a special name. You must name him Jesus because he is going to save people from their sins. Then Joseph woke up. The sun was rising and the roosters were crowing all over the village of Nazareth. He felt happy for now he knew that everything was all right. Mary was a special girl and the new baby was to be very special. God will certainly be with us. So that's the beginning of the very first Christmas. Right before baby Jesus was born, when Mary and Joseph found out that it was going to happen to them and they were going to be his parents here on earth. And they were supposed to name him Jesus. That had special meaning. I'm sure it was shocking and they had probably had a lot of questions, but it said the angel spoke very gently and that calmed Mary down. And they also reassured Joseph and then he felt okay too. So peace can come to all of us and it helps if we're gentle with each other and it helps if we're kind with each other. That makes peace easier. And peace is a big idea. We want peace in the world. We want everyone to get along and everyone to have what they need. But peace, to practice peace, is really pretty easy and you probably do it every day. Every time you smile at someone, every time you hold a door open for someone, every time you're a helper, Every time you tell someone how you're feeling, even if you're upset, if you explain it and talk with them about it and you come to an understanding, that's practicing peace. All the sharing and all the kindness, those are all ways to practice peace. And the forgiveness too. There's gonna to be times when we're upset or we're shocked or we're scared or but take that breath and give your brain a moment to check and make sure everything's safe. 
and figure out a way to solve the problems. God gives us peace. We just have to remember and ask and say thank you. There's lots of songs I could think of about peace. There's one called The Peace Train. <laughs> or there's one, Let There Be Peace on Earth and Let It Begin With Me. Or when we go to camp, we sing, I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. These are gifts from God that we can all have. Thanks, friends. See you next time.